Imagine a nuclear warhead capable of vaporizing an entire city in a fraction of a second. And that is precisely why everyone fears a missile armed with a nuclear payload. Now, picture a missile not only equipped with a nuclear warhead, but also with effectively unlimited range. From any location, nothing and no one is safe. In other words, a nuclear strike could be launched from any point on the globe, even from the antipode, the exact opposite point on the planet for any given location. Launch it from the North Pole toward the South Pole, and it would still reach its target. Meet the Buravestnik. This missile was officially unveiled for the first time by Vladimir Putin during his address to the Federal Assembly on March 2018. Designated 9M730 and known in NATO as SSC X9 Skyfall, it is expected to enter service after a decade of design and development. Skyfall is said to become the world's first nuclear cruise missile with unlimited propulsion, a weapon ominously nicknamed the Flying Chernobyl. It stands as one of the most unique missiles globally, forming a key part of Russia's modern nuclear deterrence strategy. The missile is approximately 12 meters long and with its cuboid fuselage design, is expected to carry an exceptionally powerful thermonuclear warhead. Yet, its most distinctive feature lies in its propulsion system. Unlike conventional chemical-fueled cruise missiles, it employs a miniature nuclear reactor that provides continuous, effectively, unlimited energy. Even now, numerous nuclear weapons exist worldwide that do not require unlimited range. The Sarmat ballistic missile, with a range of 18,000 kilometers, can simultaneously carry more than 15 nuclear warheads and strike virtually any point on Earth. The RS-24 Yars can deliver three guided nuclear warheads over at least 10,000 kilometers. Additionally, the emergence of hypersonic weapons introduces new challenges. So why was Skyfall developed and what makes it significant? The answer is clear. Modern systems like Sarmat and Avangard rely on rapid reaction times and hypersonic speeds to minimize the adversary's response window. In contrast, Skyfall emphasizes unlimited range and unpredictable attack vectors. Rather than shortening reaction time, it increases route variability and operational uncertainty. While ICBMs and hypersonic missiles may be faster and more reliable in a rapidly escalating nuclear scenario, they are immediately detectable. Their large size also complicates long-term deployment and operational flexibility. For Skyfall, stealth and the element of surprise are key to its effectiveness. The potential for surprise strikes stems from the inherent differences between ballistic and cruise missiles. Even hypersonic ballistic missiles ascend tens of kilometers into the upper atmosphere after launch. As a result, space-based early warning satellites equipped with multispectrum infrared sensors and over-the-horizon radar stations can detect them in a very short time. By contrast, cruise missiles flying below 100 meters are much harder to detect with early warning systems. Another distinction is the highly flexible maneuverability of cruise missiles. A cruise missile with unlimited range can effectively bypass defended areas, avoiding radar detection and direct engagement. Like an aircraft, it can follow virtually any trajectory and, with its nuclear propulsion, sustain hours of flight. Deployment constraints of massive ballistic missiles also pose challenges. Missiles weighing tens of tons and typically exceeding 17 meters require specialized ground-based launchers. Aside from submarine-launched ballistic missiles, launching such giant ICBMs from bombers or surface ships is practically impossible. A 12-meter cruise missile can be deployed in the most covert manner on various vessels, large or small, or even aircraft. These advantages combine unlimited range with compact size. Clearly, nuclear propulsion and unlimited range have the potential to bypass traditional missile defense boundaries and redefine second strike capabilities. So how does this exceptional missile actually work? The 9M730 begins with a ground-based launch assisted by a chemical booster. This phase is solely designed to accelerate the missile to operational speed 
and provide the necessary airflow. Once the boosters complete their task and the missile reaches the intended velocity, they separate and the internal nuclear reactor activates, similar to igniting a ramjet engine, except that the heat source comes not from chemical combustion but from nuclear fission reactions. In this phase, a steady airflow enters the missile and must be compressed and heated before entering the engine. There are two main methods to transfer reactor heat to the incoming air. In an open cycle, ambient air passes directly through the reactor core, absorbing heat from contact with fuel elements. This allows extremely long flight durations, but risks releasing radioactive particles and isotopes. In a closed cycle, heat is transferred via a secondary loop or heat exchanger to the external airflow reducing direct contamination but requiring heavier, more complex equipment and providing lower thermal efficiency. In both methods, thrust is generated by heating, expanding, and ejecting the airflow through the nozzle, similar to a conventional ramjet engine, but with a nuclear heat source. The test campaign for this missile began in 2016. The first known test took place in June 2016 at the Kapustin Yar range in Kazakhstan. By January 2019, at least 13 test attempts had been carried out, most of which encountered technical problems. Among them, only one was reported as relatively successful. November 2017, at the Panchkovo site, Novaya Zemila, in that launch, the missile reportedly fell into the sea after roughly 2 minutes and 35 kilometers of flight, and three specialized vessels were forced to recover nuclear components from the wreckage. The last pre-2019 test was reported in January of that year at Kapustin Yar, which U.S. authorities described as partially successful. In August 2019, a catastrophe occurred. While attempting to retrieve a missile that had fallen in 2017 from the seabed, a violent explosion took place that caused an immediate release of radiation and killed at least five Rosatom nuclear specialists. It was reported that the blast resulted from an uncontrolled nuclear reaction or the detonation of residual propellant in the propulsion unit. The incident provoked international reactions. U.S. officials strongly condemned the development of radiological emitting missiles and the system was dubbed the Flying Chernobyl. Subsequent tests have been concentrated mainly in the remote Novaya Zemila region. Analysts using satellite imagery from companies such as Planet Labs have observed changes at the Punchkovo test site, for example, rail protective buildings and a launch platform visible in August 2018 and again in the summer of 2025. Recent research has also identified a potential permanent launch location in the Vologda region, western Russia, adjacent to significant nuclear munition storage. There, neither horizontal recessed launch pads nor essential support buildings have been observed.